Predicting wind pressure on a structure is a lengthy procedure described in the ASCE 7 manual. Let's look at a special case as an introduction. Let's take a look at how you calculate the resulting wind force acting on an elevated sign. Key concepts we'll cover are how do we calculate the wind induced pressure on the sign and how do we calculate the force resultant. So the problem we want to look at today is determine the resultant force of wind acting on the sign we have. We're going to use an importance factor of 0 0.87 and that comes from the ASCE 7 manual. The sign is located on flat ground and we need to know where it's located because that affects um, the pressures and it'll be near Chicago, Illinois. So the key things we're going to need to calculate are velocity pressure, And that's given by the following relationship. Zero point zero zero two five six KZ KZ T KD V squared I where KZ KZ T and KD are all modifiers. I, the importance factor, is a modifier and V is the velocity, the peak velocity of the wind in miles per hour. The resultant force on the sign is given by the following relationship. Once we have the velocity pressure multiply by G and CF and AF where G and CF are again modifiers and AF is the surface area of the sign. To find the velocity pressure we need to know the peak velocity for wind near Chicago, Illinois. So to do that let's go to figure 1-12 from the textbook and we have peak velocities for places throughout the US including Hawaii, Puerto Rico, and the other territories and Alaska. We need to locate Chicago, Illinois on this map, the Windy City. There it is, that puts us in a region of 90 miles per hour for the peak wind velocity in this, in this region. We always want to start with an estimate of the solution. So what will the order of magnitude of the answer be? We're looking at hundreds of pounds, thousands of pounds, tens of thousands of pounds. All right, well let's do this. To estimate, let's assume that all of the modifiers are one. That means that my velocity pressure, QZ, reduces to the following expression, and if we evaluate that, we'll get just under 21 pounds per square foot. And then if we go to our force resultant, again, taking all the modifiers, and assuming that they are one, I need the area of the sign. We have eight feet wide, six feet tall. Put all those together, 995 pounds. So I estimate the resultant force to be about thousand pounds. Well that'll tell us if we are in the right ballpark once we add the modifiers in. To get the velocity pressure we need KZ, the first modifier, and it accounts for changes in pressure with height above the ground. The higher we go, the higher the pressure. Now the elevation of this sign goes from six feet 
to 12 feet, which puts us in the lowest range of heights. It means that our kz, our velocity pressure exposure coefficient, is 0 0.85. So to calculate our velocity pressure, we know that our kz is 0 0.85. KZT is a modifier that accounts for changes in pressure as wind approaches and descends from hilltops. For flat terrain, KZT is just 1.0. Now KD is a modifier that accounts for wind directionality when considering the combined loading effects. In this case, we're considering wind alone, so KD is 1.0. We already saw that velocity near Chicago is 90 miles per hour. And we said that the importance factor will be 0.87 for this. Put those all together, and our velocity pressure is 0 0.00256 times 0.85 times 1 times 1, times the 90 miles per hour squared, times the 0.87 importance factor. Put all of those together, and we get 15.33 pounds per square foot. Now notice, this compares favorably with our estimate that was about 20 pounds per foot squared. Now to obtain the resultant on the sign, we need to know G it's a modifier that accounts for gust effects. For rigid structures, it can be taken as 0.85. We need CF, which we'll get from table 1-6 from our text. CF is a modifier based on the aspect ratio of the sign. Notice if the height from the ground to the bottom of the sign is less than one quarter of the height of the sign, so if the sign is very close to the ground, we'll take the full height all the way to the ground as the height of the sign. That's not going to be an issue in our case. M is the larger dimension of the sign, in our case, 8 feet. N is the smaller dimension of the sign, in this case 6 feet. So M over N is 8 feet over 6 feet, 1.3, which is definitely below 6. So in our case, we use a CF of 1.2. The area of the sign, 6 feet times 8 feet, 48 feet squared, and let's put them all together. The resultant force is 15.33 pounds per foot squared, 0.85 and 1.2. 48 feet squared. Put them all together. 751 pounds act on the sign. And note again, compares favorably. And by that I mean They're close enough that we can believe the 751 is a reasonable 
prediction of the total wind force that will act on the sign. And so it is, compares favorably with our estimate of 1,000 pounds. Now I will point out, we could have in a few seconds estimated the force at 1,000 pounds. Sometimes that would be an underestimate. But by taking a few extra minutes and using the appropriate modifiers, we found out that the predicted force resultant is 751 pounds. That's a 25% reduction from our crude estimate, which could have a significant cost savings in comparison if uh, structures were designed based on those two numbers. Now let's go back and take a look at what we did to get here. So we started by looking at what are the relationships by which we calculate velocity pressure and force resultant on a sign. We realized we needed to look up the peak wind velocity for the Chicago area. Found that was 90 miles an hour. And we gathered together an estimate of the solution, something that we could compare against once we went through our more lengthy calculations. By taking all the modifiers and assuming they were 1.0, we got a ballpark answer of 1,000 pounds resultant force acting on the sign. To do, perform more detailed calculations or predictions of the total force resultant, we needed the KZ modifier, which accounts for total height. Since the entire sign is below 15 feet from the ground, the entire sign experiences a KZ of 0.85. We looked at the terrain modifier, was 1.0 in this case. The directionality modifier, 1.0 in this case, combined with velocity and the importance factor, we got a velocity pressure of about 15 and a third pounds per square foot. That compared well with our estimate of roughly 20, 21 pounds per square foot. So that gave us good confidence. To, work, to calculate or predict the total force resultant on the sign, we got our gust factor, and we needed to go get our aspect ratio modifier. That was 1.2 based on the aspect ratio of the sign. Include the area of the sign, we get roughly 751 for a prediction of total wind force acting on the sign. That's in the ballpark of the thousand that we um, had originally crudely estimated. So I think we have a reasonable prediction of what that sign would need to carry in terms of wind load.